Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to edit a text file using only GitHub. So the reason you might want to do this is because there's a lot of resources posted as text files on GitHub. So for example, we have the Digital Forensics Discord server, the law enforcement resources section. It provides links that could be interesting for um, law enforcement or any digital forensics practitioner. It's just a simple readme text file written in markdown language. I am editing now the uh, Digital Forensics Discord server, uh, Law Enforcement Resources. I will put a link below for the uh, Discord server if you want to join and, and discuss things about digital forensics. These Law Enforcement Resources, basically it's just a link. Right now they only have one resource listed, but then they also have kind of a short tutorial about contributing to the project. Being able to edit these text files is a good way to contribute back to open source projects uh, very quickly and easily uh, rather than writing uh, complicated code. So the first thing you have to do if you want to edit these files is create an account and log in. I've already logged in, I've already created an account, and I have a group, um, d for science group in GitHub that I'm going to copy uh, the repository to. So if I want to make any changes, I have to make my own copy first, change my copy, and then submit my changes to the original owner. Anytime you want to edit anything on GitHub, you're gonna create your own local copy and then modify that copy and then submit it for review. So I'm going to go to the uh, law enforcement resources section and to create my own copy of this that I can edit, I need to click on the fork button. Okay, so right now two people have forked it. So I'm going to click fork. And then it says, where would you like to fork this resource? Uh, J.I. James is my account, but I want to put it into my group. So if you have a group or you have multiple accounts, they'll be shown here. You'll probably just have one account and then just select that account. I'm going to copy this to my D for Science group. And then it's uh, forking the, uh, the resources page and it'll only take a second. Okay, so then now if I go back, before we only had one repository. If I refresh, you can see that I have law enforcement resources now. If I click on law enforcement resources, I have all of the same files as the original repository, okay? Except the difference is this is owned by D first science. If we go back, D digital forensics discord server still owns their own copy, but now I have my own copy that I can do anything with that I want. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is go to the readme file. That's usually the file that we're editing. You can see that there is a pencil icon. Once you've created your own copy, you should have a pencil icon for the readme. Go ahead and click that. And then we have a code view of the data, or in this case, a text file. So what I'm going to do, um, this is written in Markdown. Um, there's lots of resources online about how to code in Markdown. It's very straightforward. I won't go into that too much, but we will just start editing this just like a normal file. We have our law enforcement resources, and if we have one hash, that's a top level heading. Two hashes is a uh, second level heading. Three hashes is a third level heading. All right, and then we have uh, contributing to the project as a second level heading. So I am going to change this view a little bit. Let's look at what it actually looks like. Top level, second level, third level. Well, this is gonna be a little bit confusing once we start getting a lot of different resources in here. So I'm also gonna change their formatting um, a little bit as well as add some links. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is under MaxMind, I'm going to add my own link. So I just start typing like normal. I just put in two return keys and I'm gonna add the Sherlock database. And this is basically a database for mutual legal assistance. It has legislation from a lot of different countries um, and a lot of good contact points and information for cybercrime investigators. So this is a good resource for law enforcement. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that URL of the resource I want to add. And then I need to create a new heading because it's not IP resolution services. It is international cooperation or mutual legal assistance. So I'm going to do a, a second level header and I'm going to say mutual legal assistance um, resources. Okay. And then, so now I've created our heading. The next thing I need to do is just type what I want, but we would have a list of a lot of different things. So I'm not just going to make a paragraph. Let's go ahead and create a bullet point. So I just used the star sign with a space next to it, and then I've created a bulleted list. So I can just basically keep um, going down and making more uh, bulleted items. So now I just have one, so I'm going to say UNODC Sherlock. 
Okay, and then this is legislation, uh, competent national authority list, and treaties. Okay, so that's basically it. So I have UNODC Sherlock, legislation, CNA list, and treaties. Well, this is just text right now, so it's not totally useful um, because the person still has to go look up uh, what UNODC Sherlock is. So I'm going to add a link. Remember in a link, there's two parts to it. The part that the user sees and the part that you are um, actually going to, the URL. So the part that the user sees, I want it to be UNODC Sherlock. So I'm going to use a square bracket on the beginning and then a square bracket at the end of that. Okay. And then that creates a uh, kind of a link view. And then we put, type in a curved bracket and then a URL and then finish with a curve bracket. So we have uh, straight bracket, straight bracket, curve bracket, curve bracket with text and URL uh, inside. Okay, so now we've created a link in there. So let's go ahead and preview that. We should have a new heading called MLA resources. We should have a bullet point uh, with a link and a little bit of a description here. So click on preview. And then that's exactly what we have here. So MLA resources. Uh, UNODC Sherlock and I can click on it and then we have a little bit of a description and that looks a lot cleaner than actually a couple of these things up here. So let's go back and change the rest of that formatting. So instead of MaxMind being its own little section, I'm going to go ahead and remove that. Remember, I'm not removing this on the um, original user's document yet. I can submit these changes to the user that created this, um, but this is only changed on my copy. Okay, so I'm going to create a bullet point. We have max mind, uh, and then I'm going to do the uh, dash again just to keep it consistent. And then I need a link for max mind, and I've already looked it up because they didn't add the link. So then we have square bracket, square bracket, curly or curve bracket, URL, curved bracket. Okay, now I can just take a quick look at the preview again, and we have max mind with our description, and that looks a lot better. Uh, the next thing I want to do is um, we should always have one space between the uh, the heading and the text. That's just the, the way the standard usually goes. And then for contributing to this project, that's actually not a tool. So I'm going to go ahead and make this a first level heading just to see if it looks better. Yeah, it kind of separates it a little bit more. Okay, so that's pretty much all there is to it. Just some basic um, editing. I've added some links in here. And now whenever people go to this to my page, they can see those changes uh, once I save them. So commit changes, give it a title. We have to scroll down to the bottom. We want to commit and commit is just saving. So what did I do? I added Sherlock link plus formatting. Okay. Um, added Sherlock plus some formatting. The reason you want to do this is because for yourself, like you can keep track of actually what you did. And for uh, whoever you're going to share this with, they can see the changes that you've made and understand really quickly in one sentence, basically what you're doing. So try to make this commit statement as uh, descriptive as possible without being too long. Since we're just doing a text file, I'm going to commit directly to the main branch. That just is where I'm saving it at. So then click commit changes. And that just means save it back to your local um, path. So now we can see the changes. I have my two links here and uh, that's that's pretty much it. So now my copy has been updated. We can see that um, it was updated 15 seconds ago. And then the important thing here is this branch is one commit ahead of Digital Forensics Discord server main. Where I copied this from, it says that I have changes that they don't have. So then we have two options here, contribute and then fetch upstream. So if their copy on the Digital Forensics Discord server was also updated at the same time and they have changes I don't have, then I can do fetch upstream and I will download all of their updates. Okay. But what we want to do now is contribute this back to the community, right? So I can click contribute. This branch is one commit ahead of Digital Forensics Discord server main. So what we'll do is create something called a pull request. And what this does is basically flags them and says, hey, I have changes. You guys can include these changes if you want to. So we're creating a pull request. We didn't change a lot, so it does say able to merge. And then in the bottom, you can see that I have my title and you can see that I have all of these different changes that I've made. Everything in green is what I've added. Everything is red is what I've removed. And then that's pretty much it. I can review this. 
So then if everything looks okay, click create pull request. Again, I have my description there. So the more descriptive your description, um, whenever you send this over to the person who created the file originally, they can just read that description and say, oh yeah, they've added a link. Okay, good. So make sure your description is, is as, as descriptive as possible here. That way they can make a quick decision and then uh, just hit create pull request. And then now we're back over in the digital forensics discord server, law enforcement resources. So this is not my local copy. We have pull requests on their side. That's one. That means that they have one update that needs reviewed, right? Um, they're not going to let you just uh, push your changes directly to their repository. They need to check it first. So this pull request goes into a queue and then the author basically gets to decide when those pull requests get implemented in their code. So my account wants to merge from my repository. Okay, uh, no conflicts, that's good. And then you can even leave a comment. So sometimes they might ask for more clarification if it's a complicated update, but uh, most of the time, if it's something simple like adding a link, most likely they'll just accept it or, or reject it directly without too much discussion. So we are back in the uh, law enforcement resources. We have our pull request. If I look at their copy, notice they don't have those links yet. They have not updated their copy. But if I go over to my account, if I go to my account, law enforcement resources, I do have those updates, right? So if they accept my changes, then their copy will also be updated. If they reject my changes, then um, my copy is still changed and their copy is not. So it's that's why it's called a fork because they could go in different directions. So that's pretty much it for editing a text file in GitHub and then submitting it back to the original community. This is a really, really good way to interact with the community because it's very straightforward. You can do this with documentation. You can do this with adding links. Editing documentation is a really good way to give back to the community because so many people are using documentation. Um, so we have to make sure that they are up to date, but sometimes they kind of get neglected. So if you want to start working with the community somewhere, just doing this kind of thing is a really good way to begin. Okay, so I hope that was useful for editing text files on GitHub. Um, and hopefully contributing back to the community. Thank you very much.